Hello friends, continuing our series on GABA. The last two episodes, I know a lot, not many people saw the second one, but the last two episodes we were basically talking about the anatomy of GABA in the body, which enzymes are involved in its synthesis, in its degradation, and it coming into the synaptic cleft and being taken out, and then which receptors it actually activates. There are basically three classes, that's why I called it the ABCs of GABA, A, B, and C. Today we'll be talking about the A receptors, but it's only because they're the only ones that are relevant to the topic. What the topic is, is this. So GABA is the natural ligand for the GABA A and B and C receptors, which means it's the natural molecule in our body that binds to and activates and causes a response element from them. But we actually have endogenous molecules that are not necessarily the natural ligands for these receptors, but they are what are called allosteric modulators of the receptors. So I'm going to tell you about them today, and those two things are neurosteroids and cannabinoids. So specifically, what is an allosteric modulator? So the receptor, and by the way, here we're only talking about GABA-A receptors. The GABA-B and GABA-C receptors, we don't know about their endogenous modulators. Well, we don't know much about them yet. So I'm reserving this to GABA-A. What is an allosteric modulator? So a, a receptor has an ortho, I think or, orthosteric site, which is a site, the site at which the natural ligand like GABA binds to and activates the receptor, but there's also an allosteric site. And there's several of them. Basically, they're different sites in, uh, of the receptor at which a molecule can bind to the receptor, not activate it, but what's called potentiate it for GABA's action, which means make GABA more effective there. So the drugs that do this are famous. There are benzodiazepines or sleep medications, Z drugs. But what are the natural molecules that do that in our body? Well, those are the neurosteroids and the endocannabinoids. So how do they do this? So first of all, I want to talk about the neurosteroids. Neurosteroids have been a topic of discussion, I think, online or at least on YouTube. Thanks a lot to Derek from More Plates, More Dates because of his interest in finasteride. So one of the famous, uh, you know, post-finasteride syndrome, which is a syndrome of depression, sexual dysfunction, anxiety, and so on, is thought to be mostly due to an inhibition of neurosteroid synthesis that is due to finasteride. What are neurosteroids? Your body produces steroids in three places. One is your gonads, one is your, or if you're a woman, your ovaries or whatever. The other is your adrenals. And the third place is actually your brain. So your brain can go through the whole synthesis of steroid synthesis, but it can also convert steroids. So for example, say progesterone is synthesized by your gonads. Well, that progesterone, which is lipophilic, can transfer, can go into your brain. And in your brain, the TSPO receptor, which is the translocator protein, formerly called the peripheral benzodiazepine receptor, is the rate limiting step in the synthesis of neurosteroids and the conversion of things like, allopregnan uh, so like progesterone into allopregnanolone. So your, bro your brain both synthesizes allopregnanolone, which is one of these neurosteroids, and converts it from upstream molecules. So there are actually three neurosteroids that are important for the understanding of the GABA receptors. I'm going to talk about two of them here, allopregnanolone and THDOC. For a more comprehensive understanding of neurosteroids, please visit my website. Uh, you'll go to my blog section and there's a section, there's a series of articles called Snorting Progesterone or Protect Your Brain from, from Finasteride in which I go into more detail. But for what we need to know here, there's one neurosteroid called allopregnanolone. That's the most important one and we really need to talk about that. Another is THDOC. THDOC, which the full name is uh, deoxycorticosterine. THDOC is synthesized by the adrenals in times of stress. So it's an acute uh, synthesis. It's not really the main um, a neurosteroid involved in this modulation of the GABA receptors. So THDOC is, is uh, an acute thing. It comes for, from stress and it's not this uh, as concerning as allopregnanolone. Allopregnanolone, on the other hand, which is, as I said, synthesized from progesterone, is extremely important to uh, GABAergic function. In fact, it is the reason why women experience postpartum depression after, their, uh, after giving birth. Because when, uh, when, when women are pregnant, their progesterone levels are at the highest that they are ever experiencing during their lifetimes, causing downstream the most synthesis of allopregnanolone, causing the most modulation of GABA A receptors, meaning opening up for GABA, making the lady that's pregnant very comfortable, relaxed, giving her that glow, everything's all right. And then suddenly after giving birth, the progesterone declines, shoots down, allopregnanolone shoots down postpartum depression, which is why the FDA in the, in the US has approved uh, a bioidentical allopregnanolone delivered in an IV 
uh, solution for women after giving birth as a treatment for postpartum depression. So it's a very important molecule. Now, basically what it seems to be is that uh, molecules like allopregnanolone and THDOC are involved in the natural, uh, let's say, structural integrity of our GABAergic system. So, for example, uh, uh, there's a, a class of GABA-A receptors called the alpha-1, beta-2, delta receptors. Remember, there's 19 genes, there's different groups of them. This class of receptors are much less responsive to GABA without THDOC being there. In general, it's been found, originally it was found that GABA-A receptors that contain delta units respond to neurosteroids. Later, it was shown also the ones that contain ga uh, gamma units, which looks like a Y. Uh, also respond to neurosteroids. The ones that are most responsive are actually the alpha-1, beta-1, delta units or the alpha-3, beta-1, delta units. Very responsive. Now, there are also other neurosteroids that affect the GABA-A receptors. Uh, for example, DHEA and pregnenolone, which are frequently supp supplemented, are often converted in the body into their sulfated forms. That's pregnenolone sulfate, Preg S is what it's called, Preg dash S, or DHEA sulfate, DHEA dash, dash S. The sulfated forms are actually negative allosteric modulators of the GABA A receptors. So they do the opposite, but they're far weaker than allopregnanolone and those. Now, I should mention another thing about allopregnanolone, THDOC, and the GABA A receptor modulators that at low concentrations, they modulate the receptors. At very high concentrations, they actually activate the receptors like GABA does. So if someone were to take something that really increased the synthesis of allopregnanolone, like something that agonized that TSPO rate limiting uh, step in the synthesis of neurosteroids, like a drug called etifoxine, which we'll talk about more later, or something like 1,4-butanediol uh, or GHB, if you get a lot of allopregnanolone synthesis immediately, it's probably not just modulating the GABA-A receptors, directly agonizing them. Now, I'm not gonna talk about this in this section because this series is about GABA, but it, it's important for people to know that allopregnanolone is also extremely involved in male sex drive. So that's uh, just something I should mention generally. Now about cannabinoids, it's specifically one cannabinoid that we've, and this is like a little bit less important, but there's one cannabinoid we found that modulates the GABA-A receptors it's called 2-arachidonol glycerol 2-AG, and it's been shown to have a synergy with THDOC and to particularly modulate complexes, GABA-A complexes that contain the beta-2 receptors. So that's basically an overview here. Uh, I should also mention that the TSPO receptor, that late rate limiting uh, receptor in the synthesis of neurosteroids, it can be agonized selectively by like a molecule called XBD, which is a research chemical, XBD-173, or by other molecules like uh, etifoxin, which we talked about. So basically what I wanted you guys to know here is that your GABA-A receptors, they don't just depend on GABA and they aren't just what they are, they depend on that neurosteroid environment in your body, as well to a lesser degree on on the endocannabinoids in your body. Which by the way, endocannabinoids, I didn't mention, but endocannabinoids are things that agonize or uh, affect the cannabinoid one and cannabinoid two receptor like CBD or THC, but we also have endogenous ones. All right guys, I hope that was brief enough for this chapter. Stay tuned to the next chapter. We're gonna start talking about some interesting things. Thank you for listening.